another session out for carp along my favorite stretch of river. We're downstream a little bit, a little bit of a weedier area. There's a lot of fish out in front of me. I've even seen a couple that look like they're over 20 pounds, all just about 10, 20 feet out, just in and out of the patches of weeds. So this one fell victim to the boily with the pop-up corn, fished on a combi rig. I'm gonna get this guy back and I'm gonna try and get another one. It's been a pretty crazy morning so far. This is now my my fourth fish. It's the second one I'm showing you. It's just been awesome. Great morning. Just thought I'd come out. I got out a little bit late this morning than expected. Fishing a really weedy patch. Oh, calm down, calm down. And there's the result. Another beauty carp. This river is just so full of amazing fish. You know, this one's got to be eight or nine pounds. It's a nice chunky one like they usually are. Again, victim to the boily of my, my own making and the pop-up corn. Fish just in that little patch of weeds, just not far out. And you can see right after the cast, it, I wasn't didn't even have the alarm fully set up and that fish screamed off with it. So we're off to a great start. We've got four fish in the bag. The two that I didn't show you were just little guys. So we're really shooting for one of the big ones. There's some 20 pounders swimming around in front of me, really close by too. But I got a few things to show you for this round. Uh, a few things about the rig, a few things about your line, possibly even some more baiting tips. So stick with us. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Now, one of the important details about that last fish that we got, um, like I said, we're fishing really heavy weeds. And uh, these weeds go like right from about five feet out to about 25 feet out. It's just this thick blanket with little openings here and there. And I, I stopped in this spot today specifically because, well, one, the willow trees are gonna help block the wind, so I'm not gonna have a lot of movement on my line or my rod tip. And uh, it is a cool morning, so dressed, I didn't dress appropriately for the cold weather. So I wanna stay out of that cool breeze. But the, the fish are moving in and out of these little pockets. So I've been baiting the little pockets with a prepared maze. I've been baiting just past the weed line out in that deeper water, but also right in all these little close pockets. And I'm right now focusing on just the spot over here to my right, right off this willow tree. Uh, I'm gonna fish this spot till I get another couple of fish, and then I'll move my line to one of the other baited spots. I want those fish feeding comfortably everywhere so that no matter where I put my line, they don't sense a trap. Now, with all these weeds that we're fishing in, it makes it very difficult to land a fish. Uh, on top of that, having the willow tree right here, you know, those fish go upstream or downstream. I've got one on either side. Uh, my line's gonna be rubbing on those branches. So I've already taken care of it now. But one thing you wanna do that's very important, whenever you're fishing weeds, timber, uh, rocks, you know, any kind of obstructions that your line's gonna rub against, you wanna check your line for mix abrasions, anything like that, any little, any little thing that might be slightly off. So just, you take your line and you just run your thumb down. Now, because these fish can get into the, these obstructions when I have a lot of line out, you're gonna to wanna to check a good long section. And uh, I checked about 20 feet. And luckily, even after that fish going under the willows, I didn't end up with any nicks or, or cuts, uh, except for just the last couple of feet. So I trimmed that off, I retied, and now I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about a fish breaking off just because I didn't take the time to check my line. You know, same ring as we've been using most of this season. Size four uh, carp hook uh, made by Monster Carp Tackle. Uh, the boily, like I said, of my own ingredients. We'll, uh, we'll do another video on that one day. A little piece of pop-up corn just to first give it a little bit of visibility but also to have it standing straight up, taking some of that weight off the off the actual hook itself. Um, I'm fishing a, a short piece of braid. This is that combi link rig. A uh, short piece of braid to right here from the hook, just so it's got a little bit of free movement. And then a stiff piece of monofilament before we get to the swivel. And then the lead clip system. So if you watched our tip clips video on the lead clip system, you'll know that this is designed to drop that lead. So with these fish getting stuck in those weeds, I don't want them using that lead against me, and I don't want them dragging it around if by chance they did break off. I want that lead gone so that it's safer for the fish and it's easier for me. So we just I'm just using some three-quarter ounce sinkers right now. Uh, I'm not using the big ones because, well, one, that would be pretty expensive with how many fish I'm getting. I'd be losing a lot of weights. But also, I'm, I'm really fishing so close in, I don't need that casting power or that holding power because I'm not even out in the current. Just got the anti-tangle sleeve, just pushed back up over that tail rubber just to help hold that in place. And then there's the rig. And I can already see that there's some fish moving around right back in front of me about, uh, well, if I stuck the net on, I could probably scoop them up. They're, that, they're coming in that close. I'm even gonna try something a little bit different. Right underneath this willow tree here, I'm baiting a spot right on the end, so it's 12 feet out, and I'm actually going to be tucking my line in there a little bit later and see what happens. But we're ready to go. I'm going to get it back out there, and uh, I'm going to try and get another fish. Just out in front of me, um, not far at all, 10 feet, there's a bunch of fish feeding confidently, pretty, pretty damn confidently, and uh, I think there's about five or six fish in there. So what I'm going to do, just for something different, is same rig, but I just took the lead off the lead clip system, 
I'm going to just kind of free line the weight of this boilie in the lead clip out there. Just let it sink right in on top of those weeds ever so delicately and uh, see if I can get one of those fish to pick it up. So let's give it a shot. See the free lining trick worked. Definitely a good fish. Really good battle. Really close in. Let's get this fish back. And, uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, but put the uh, the bait back out with the lead on. And I'm gonna enjoy my coffee. Well, the bottom bait's still doing the trick. Really good battle from this fish. Apparently it's not over. Another chunker. Get them all in the camera shot there. Really good fish. Really happy to have gotten this one. Again, just fishing my baited area with the boiling and the pop-up corn. Man, it's, you know, when you're onto a deadly technique, you don't want to change. Uh, I do want to try a few other things. So maybe because it's been so good this morning, we've got a bunch of fish. Maybe it's time to try a different bait. Maybe just a pop-up or maybe a different boilie, something like that. But we'll see what we can come up with. Let's get this fish back and uh, continue.
continue enjoying this session. Well, I'm sure it's not going to be long before we get another bite. Because it seems to just still be pretty steady, even though we've got a ton of ducks out in front stirring up my swim. Uh, I think that's actually drawing the fish over. What I wanted to take a second to talk about was the hooks that I've been using. Now, I've used the pre-tied rigs. Um, these are by a company called Carp Zoom. Um, really big fan of the swivels and the braid and the sleeves on these, but I'm not a huge fan of the hooks. Um, usually you get two or three fish on the hook and then the, bend, the point will, or yeah, the point will uh, bend over a bit or the barb bends over a bit. You get little burrs on it. It's cost me a bunch of fish. Um, they, these hooks also seem to bend straight pretty quickly, and I'm not a fan of that. But what I've really liked is these hooks by a company called Monster Carp Tackle. Um, this, these ones here are the size 4 maximum power. You can see there, they're a really heavy wire hook, and uh, man, are they sharp. Really, really sharp. Um, I've not had any issues with these hooks. Another hook I use, uh, also by Monster Carp Tackle, is the Universal Perfection. Um, not quite as heavy gauge wire. These are the size 4 as well. And I've also been using the size 6. Um, not as heavy, but really, really good. So definitely adding those hooks to my arsenal has made a huge difference. And uh, it also gives me the opportunity to tie my own rigs with a hook that I have a lot of confidence in rather than using those pre tied ones. Uh, so the pre tied ones I think I'll stick to, you know, handing over to Chad whenever he joins me. Let him use the cheaper stuff and I'll use the good stuff. Definitely a tip I would share. Always pass your buddy the weaker tackle. Just ups those odds a little bit better. Now it's definitely slowed down a little bit. I think it's been about a half hour since I got that last fish. And, uh, one thing I do whenever, whenever I go a long stretch without a, a bite, you know, in a spot like this where it's pretty steady action, um, you know, say anywhere from 10 minutes to 40 minutes if I haven't caught a bite uh, or seen fish moving around, uh, I bring that bait in and I don't like to change my boilie over and over again. Uh, you know, one boilie is going to get me several fish. So what I do is I use a booster. Uh, this one in particular is a sweet corn booster. Uh, it goes with some of the ingredients that I have in my boilie, and it goes with uh, the prepared maize that I use uh, to bait up my area. I put some of this in the pot while I boil that maize down to soften it up. Uh, that way, instead of the water pulling that flavor and that scent completely out of the corn, um, it's actually helping boil it in something that has that scent, so it's not really losing, it's actually helping put something in. So this particular booster that I use is made by World Classic Baits. It's the Sweet Corn Booster. They've got a lot of different flavors like Scopex and all kinds of other things. Uh, I do have some Scopex pop-ups that I use. I also put this on them. Uh, pretty much all of my carp fishing get some of this, whether it be on my PVA bags uh, or PVA sticks, on the bottom baits, pop-ups, and even, like I said, in the, the chum that I put out to bait my areas with, uh, this has definitely helped. So like I said, I'll go 10, 15, 20 minutes without a bite, usually dip my bait in a little bit of this, get some of that scent soaked back in, and uh, doesn't usually take long after that. I can hear thunder, so there's definitely a storm rolling in, so I'm going to get things packed up in case I have to move quickly. And uh, hopefully we'll get a few more fish before it gets bad, but if not, I um, might have to pack it in for the end of the day. Well, it seems the weather's holding off for us. Managed to get another fish in. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Got a lot of sun behind me, so it's hard to get position here, but it's a beauty fish. This one took a, a double boilie and a pop-up corn. Went with kind of a snowman rig. Get one a little closer. 
really nice fish. I was just starting to see some of them coming up and actually feeding just off the surface. I was going to try maybe a, a pop-up just on the surface. And then this guy ran off and spooked them both. So I'm going to get him back and we're going to just kind of take a look at the water and see what's happening and we'll see what else we'll try. Got some of that corn booster. You know, the bait's been out there for a little while, a little bit saturated so uh, with water. So some of that scent's come out of it. I'm just gonna just drop it right in the jug. Here, I'm gonna turn it this way. And just bounce it in there to just get some of that scent around the boily. To just kind of give it a good oily coating. And then once it gets out there. Actually, you'll, you'll actually, you would see it when you put it, if you put it in a jug of water, you actually see the oils just start to seep off of it. It's really, really cool. And uh, it definitely has helped the fishing. So I'm going to get this back out there and try and get another one. Using that booster again, it's definitely paid off. You can see by the, the take on that, the, that fish, I mean, it was a good aggressive strike. Definitely really wanted that bait. Took in the corner there. None of the fish we've actually managed to get in today have been huge. We've lost a few good ones, real good sized ones. Again, you know, another welcome fish. They're all really fat, even these short ones. You know, it's, it's turned out to be yet another incredible session here. And, uh, you know, the, this particular park, it, again, one of my most comfortable spots for catching this uh, consistent, good-sized carp. You know, the park is alive. You can hear everybody back there. You know, kids in the playground, people having picnics, and uh, me enjoying this. Get this one back, and uh, you know, since the weather hasn't actually come in and given us the storm, we had maybe 10 minutes of uh, light rain. Uh, might stick it out for a little while longer than expected, and uh, see if we can get a few more fish. Great way to end a session. Another beauty. Slowed right down, but you know it's still been pretty steady bites. Just instead of every five minutes, it's about every 15 or 20. And, you know the fish are all still good quality. I've lost a number of them today. Unfortunately, I had a couple of real beasts on, and uh, you know the thick weeds out in front, and. Uh, I just I couldn't manage them through it, so unfortunately they got away this time, but we had a, a great day, lots of fish, lots of activity, and uh, I'm going to get this fish back, we'll see you next time, oh, bees are getting me, and uh, yeah, enjoy your time on the water.